Michael Joseph Murphy here, the Jacksonville Piano Man. I've uh, been a dance musician for 15 years at uh, Jacksonville University. Didn't plan on it, kind of fell into it, but it's actually really easy. And uh, this video is going to show you how to be a dance musician. Being a dance musician is pretty easy. A dance class typically takes an hour and a half uh, to even two hours. And you only play about through 50% to 80% of the class because obviously they're gonna be teaching them routines. And so a number of the time you get to sit there and read a book or watch Netflix or play a game or whatever while you're waiting to do your, when you're ready to do your job. However, when it is time for you to do your job, all you're listening to is the tempo and the meter that they give. That's pretty much it. Your job is a glorified clock. So you'll hear a dance instructor say, seven, two, three, eight, two, three. You should feel the beat, seven, two, three, eight, two, three. And all you need to do is play some broken notes or play some split chords that's in time with that. You can just even improvise in the key of C and go. And that's all you do, you're counting for them. Or like a drummer. to break it down. Next, you want to make it interesting though for the dancers. So one of the things you can do is just improvise with some nice notes. You can make something a little more lyrical. theme and make it into um, whatever meter you're playing so um Like I said, your number one job is to keep the beat, a steady, even beat, okay? Do not rush the tempo, do not slow it down. You are just counting to them through your fingers. The number two thing you wanna do though is make sure that your phrasing is proper. Now most musicians even have no idea what phrasing is even as they become professionals, but it's very important to understand that dancers, um, dancers do understand phrasing even though most of them don't even know they do, but they count to eight, huge in our sense of phrasing. As musicians, we typically count to four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But that's too short. It really doesn't give us a, uh, a long enough time to complete a phrase. So by counting to five, six, seven, eight, that is a great way to think of completing a phrase. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Typically, and for most of you know, uh, anything about phrasing, most music that has a complete phrase, it takes up eight measures. So eight measures typically completes a phrase. And if music is most commonly in four, four time, four times eight is 32 counts. So typically you're gonna have 32 counts uh, to go ahead and complete a phrase. That's what the dancers are really listening for. The, the dancers are listening for a phrase so they know whenever they're routine is done so they can turn around. Let's talk about a typical ballet class. Typical ballet class, while it might be an hour and a half long, is broken into two parts. The bar, that's what they do at the bar while they're warming up and stretching and get ready for class. And then the floor, where they typically go across the floor at diagonals or sit in the center and do a number of teams on the floor. So, at the bar, Usually we start off with what's called plie. This is where they basically bend down with their legs and uh, do some nice long stretches. So you need to make sure the music sounds long. One of the ways that you can make music sound long and drawn out is play triple meters. And typically plies are in triple. So just improvising in a triple meter for plies, the instructor might stay set, two, three, and up two, three, and plie, okay? You should hear ba, 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 
Bah. Okay. Now, before everything you play, to set up the dancers, you do a pre-count, or basically a little intro. One of the easiest things you can do is just play something that's like a tonic to a sub-dominant to a dominant to a tonic. For those of you who just use, what, Nashville number system, a one chord to a four chord to a five chord back to a one chord, like this. One. get up on their tippy toes. This is called releve. Releve is like where they get up and they're stretched out legs and they're, and they're, uh, they're well, they're releve, <laughs> they're, they're up. So if they sit in that position for a while, you can pretty much assume that, oh, I think they're done. So of course then either bring the phrase to an end, which you know, go tonic to dominant, or excuse me, dominant to tonic. <laughs> know that it's done or you might hear um, the instructors say and then turn and they're gonna do it on their side in which case just elongate that dominant and they'll say turn to the other side and they just improvise again okay. and pretty much each bar routine is like that they do something on one side like their left side and then they flip on the bar and they do it on the right side so whatever you do, you just do it twice. Uh, plies, like I said, are typically that nice stretch where you want to go and play typically threes. Sometimes they'll count it out in a four, which would be a nice slow adagio kind of four. Okay, But for the most part, even if they count out a four, I'd still recommend putting triplets on each beat so that it sounds, um, again, very circular and, and, and open. The second routine that they do at the bar is called Tandu. And these terms, you can go ahead and look up what they mean and, uh, and even take a ballet class if you want and you'll understand what they mean. All you need to know is, as a musician, is Tandus typically are in duple. It's something that is a little bit more rigid that they kind of go back and forth with. So duple meters are what's best. So you might hear them say Tandu and bum bum bum, bum bum bum. There's your tempo. Just make sure you phrase it properly. Go ahead and improvise. And for a lot of ballet classes, you do not need to sit there and play ballet music, a lot of classical stuff. By the way, great stuff to do. But if you play for a hour and a half ballet class on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, then you do it four weeks, and then you do it nine months out of the year, and then you do it for 10 years, yeah, they get tired of hearing that stuff. So that's why it's very important to, most of what you're gonna do is improvise. Second, is to go and take popular tunes and make it fit the phrase and that they count. So just keep in mind that your job is not only to count for them, but please, good golly, make it interesting for those dancers because this is a routine for them. They hear it over and over, and there are some dance musicians out there that are as boring as anything because they play their typical stuff over and over, and that's what they want to play. I highly suggest if you want to go and keep the job and do a job well and play anything and everything, just make sure it fits in the phrase and with the right tempo. Sometimes you have to shave off certain measures um, to make it fit the phrase. And we'll talk about that later. 
Let's get back to Duple. Duple meter might be something the, for the tondus. That might be something that goes tondu, bum, 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 bum. And they say maestro, which means you play. Or they might say and, which means you do the pre-count, okay? Um, or they might say thank you. Or a few of them might actually say five, six, seven, eight, and you start. Pre-count. Go. I don't know. I'm just never mind. Just one scores and five chords. I highly recommend, as you're playing music like this, and most professional musicians should know this, anyways. But literally, dance with them. Move your body and move your feet. It is what's going to keep you in line with them. If you are dead straight and dead tight and dead, oh, just restricted, your music is going to sound that way as well, okay? Now, while we are keeping an even beat, you don't necessarily need to make it as tight as a metronome. You can have a little bit of variation in there. Deviance, uh, deviation. And in, 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 the, in that timing, just a little bit, because it breathes, and you're moving along with them. So one of the best things you'll do is you'll actually see them out of the corner of your eye, and you'll be able to then go ahead and follow along with them, if you're dancing and moving with them. It keeps that beat nice and even. And if you're doing that, you can throw in as many 16, 30 second notes, 64 as you want, because you're keeping the beat even. that be going so you not need to do anything fancy yet until you get really comfortable with it because what you really don't want to do is disrupt their class these are students that are working really hard um, it's professors that are working really hard and remember your job is counting it's as easy as that so if you mess that up yeah you failed so make sure you keep it nice and even and and easy until you get more comfortable okay tondus they're in duple Let's go and talk about degages. Degages sometimes are in duple or triple. Same kind of thing. They might say degage two and a bum ba da dum tap two and a bum. Now sometimes what you might hear, and again, dancers sometimes the instructors might talk in gibberish, talk like that. You know, they'll be using their French terms and their Russian terms and stuff like that, which you don't need to you don't need to know. I'm 15 years, I, I know a couple of them, but I still don't know that many. And the idea is you're listening to boom 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 boom. You hear the accents, gibberish, okay? Even if they say five and a six and a seven and a 12, 15 and a 21, 32, whatever, they can say whatever numbers they want. What you should hear is click, 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 okay? So again, that sounds like it would be a duple, degage kind of routine, give them a pre-count, maestro, and you can go and pick other keys too, obviously. As you start to progress with your skill and you're improvising, I highly recommend, get out of the key of C. Maybe, maybe we'll go and pick like a, a D minor here. Now it sounds kind of like the last one. I got this little oom five sound here going. Maybe um, a lot of times they, the instructors are so busy thinking about the routines, they'll actually count out basically the same meter, the same tempo, the same feel as what they had in the last, as in the last routine. So sometimes you can help them. You can help them get out of the box. So give them other accents and change up the style, maybe like to tangos or to cha-chas or to rock, swing. Even though you hear them count, boom, dum, 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 maybe give them accents. So if they say, all right, five, six, seven, and eight, and... Outside the box, and they might have been hearing this in their head. And by you just keeping that same beat nice and even, you go. Yeah, and that might inspire the dancers, it might inspire the, inspire the professor as well. 
or the dance instructor. So I keep saying professor, the dance instructor. Okay. Uh, fourth, typically in the class, then is Ron de Jams. They make these big circle kidney shapes on the floor. Okay. So that, and as musicians, professional musicians, you should know typically whenever you have circles that are being created, it's usually a triple, like 99% of the time. One, two, three, oh, one, two, three. So they might then just go and call out their Ron de Jams and they'll say, Ronda Jama, and the gibberish is still there. That's all we need is to hear those accents. So then you might go ahead and decide, all right, I'm going to go ahead and maybe now let's, um, let's go ahead and play something maybe that they recognize even more. So hopefully if you start collecting your own repertoire, if you start using certain apps out there, I recommend, I think people pronounce it Scribd, S-C-R-I-B-D, but it's like Netflix for books. Highly recommend it for also you music teachers out there. But... If I wanted to go and grab something, it doesn't necessarily need to be a waltz. It can be something that you turn into a triple meter or a waltz. So, for example, um, I'm just going to go and grab something here from, uh, I don't know. We'll grab something here from Princess and the Frog, okay? I'm going to grab an actual triple meter. Um, here we go. They might recognize this from Princess and the Frog, Randy Newman. There's our pre-count. and stop they're not gonna get but I've never been yelled at before but um it is important that even while you might be listening to Netflix or watching a movie on another iPad while you're playing for them which is totally doable um, it is very important that you keep one of those airpods out so you can hear what they're doing because like I said your job's very easy all you're doing is keeping the counts but because it's so easy if you mess it up yeah you look like a fool of it okay so make sure you can hear what they say so when they say stop or redo it or faster or slower, you can still hear their direction um, and make the class go smoothly, okay? So like I said, take a popular piece and go ahead and play it for them, uh, or then also maybe take, um, let's just go ahead and take, I'll, I'll do what a like, Little Mermaid here, and um, take a piece then that is not in triple meters, but then flip it into triple meter, okay? Make sure the phrase is correct, so if you go, um, something that's pretty easy to do. Um, if you're not sure how to do it, watch some of my other videos and I'll explain it or reach out to me. But once again, that is a lot more interesting to most of these students that are taking another bar class for the hundredth time in their career, or probably thousandth time in their career, than sitting there playing another Chopin or another Strauss or something like that, which again, keep those, use them here and there, but making a whole ballet class, all classical, yeah, the kids don't enjoy it too much. Okay, so uh, next, what we have on the list as far as our bar routines go is frappe. Frappes are these quick little flappy foot things that they do, which are pretty quick. So they'll say like frappe and a boom, and a bum, and a da 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 da. So goof around with it again. Now that we've already played maybe some light classical, we've already done some rock, we've done some popular stuff, maybe just go and improv. Uh, let's do like a, a rag, a quick stride piano. So frappe and a two, maestro and. Give them the tonic, dominant tonic, okay? Right around, like I said, and start on the other side. So just keep an eye out for it, okay? 
Next, um, they typically do something called a fondue, which can be a four or can be a three. Just listen carefully and match what they count out for the fondue. Same little thing. They might do these little things called uh, petit allegros and petit allegro on air, things like that. Again, <laughs> 15 years, they change them up. They also use weird, you know, words like that, which I'm like, okay. All you're doing is listen to what they count out. It's as easy as that. So all of a sudden, if they're doing something, do not be so stressed about which what's coming up. Just listen to them. If they say, maestro, of N, two, three, bum, bum, bum. All right, there you go. <laughs> exactly what they count okay <clears throat> and last usually at the bar is something called ground bot maz and this is where they swing their legs boom, 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 boom. so ground bot maz typically are a march it's usually a duple uh kind of march dun, 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 dun. <laughs> for a while on that okay but they now pretty much stop they usually go get some water or something like that and then they're about to do the floor okay so now for about another 40 minutes or so they're going to do routines across the floor and your job is to listen to them count them out as well okay um i'm not even going to go into much of the floor stuff because it varies but just so you know that was the first half of the class was the bar that's pretty much how um i won't even post a, a picture for you guys to see um pretty much what the, the bar routine is and what the meter is. Um, and then they do their stuff across the floor, okay? Um, let's go ahead now and just and talk a bit um, about the two styles of rhythm that you can play. This is important. I, when I first started, my, the dance instructor, his name's Brian, really nice guy. Uh, he was the head of, he's the head of the dance department where I work. And he was very forgiving. I didn't realize how forgiving he was until I became a much better dance musician. I was like, ooh, I was doing some things wrong and probably messing up his classes just a little bit at times. One of the things that, that um, would happen often, and I didn't realize it was, I would be playing a swing. Uh, jazz standards. Love playing the jazz standards for the classes. That's one of the best things as far as me. playing something besides classical, go with jazz standards. One of the problems is jazz standards as we know, typically are swing, okay? Now, we also know that if we make them straight, we they, 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 they sound like bossa novas, basically. So you either can play um, a jazz standard as a swing or as a bossa or a couple other varied styles. So let's just go ahead and goof around this a little bit, okay? Let's go and do Buffalo Gals, okay? Buffalo Gals is a nice older piece, and we have... <laughs> That's a nice, even, um, that's actually a swing, isn't it? Now, if we, when they wanted it straight, though, okay, so in other words, it's one thing to change up the music and make it a swing. For the most part, it doesn't mess up their class too much because they're still listening to beats. So if they say, and, 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 and a step, and you play. It doesn't matter. Now, if you play it as a bossa. swing the second one was straight for the most part if they're dancing on every beat dum, 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 that swing or the straight is not going to matter much to them but if they're moving inside that's awfully fast song to move inside of those beats for a dancer but that does matter at times whenever it's a swing or a straight like i said it matters just in those tiny little uh nuances that a dancer might feel between a swing and then between straight type of feel so just try to go and feel it out. At times you can ask which one they prefer, but a number of times it really doesn't matter, especially when it's as fast like that, okay? Um, it's important then to go ahead and be able to take something like that and make it into a triple meter. Just take those measures, cut them in half, and make it basically a six, eight. <laughs> I 
instructor might say, please make it into a tango. Make it a tango by doing that little marks. We can talk about, um, I'll do another video about different styles of music. We want to go. sound relaxing and new agey. Ugh. Okay, let's see. So you might go, uh, let's maybe slow the hill. If they want that tempo, you might go, they might say, uh, I want it to sound like Bach. All right? So of course you use, uh, I don't know, some of those Baroque techniques that we'll talk about. And um, wow, I don't know. exactly the most baroque sounding it's a little light classical but anyways taking songs and then changing the styles is something that a more advanced musician or a more advanced dance musician is expected to do um i'll post up more videos on how to change styles of music for you but for the most part in class they're not going to be asking that especially for beginner um dance musicians and the truth is i know so many great musicians that are professionals that that go out and gig you know around with me and do dueling piano acts and stuff and there's a number of them that are terrified about playing for dance uh, for dance classes. And the truth is, like I've said this whole time, this is not that difficult because your basic job is to count and then you are also expected to keep the phrasing evenly. And if you even listen, something like this song, a lot of music, that's 20th century especially, is phrased in bars of eight. phrases um, of course and we'll talk about it in our video but if you do have certain songs especially like Beatles Beatles music typically is not phrased in eight so then sometimes you need to shave off a measure or add a measure and do whatever you need to do and make it fit eight bars because yes that is truly I mean it is almost as important as keeping that beat even because as soon as the phrase gets off the dancers all of a sudden lose their routine the instructors base their stuff off this kind of I recommend thinking of it like a baseball diamond approach whenever we think phrasing, right? So the dancers get this mental image, they don't realize it, but they're getting this mental image of going away from home to first, to second, to third, and back to home. And if you run off to fourth base or fifth base, all of a sudden in their heads, they don't know why, but something felt weird. And now they're starting back at the beginning of a phrase that they have, and you're somewhere else, and the music does not match up. Phrasing is incredibly important as well, okay? Hopefully this answered a number of questions about an introduction to being a dance musician. Uh, please like and subscribe. Reach out to me with any other questions you have, and I'll post another one for you eventually. Thank you.